So by the time you get to this uh, number, it's number eight or nine in the Panda book because they made some edits to it. Um, there's not much time left in the session. Depending upon how much time there is left after this, I may start introing into kind of regular algebraic lines questions. But as far as this question's concerned, what I asked of my students is I'll say, hey, on the SAT, they'll give you uh, a graph a lot, like a linear graph. And they love to ask what the x-intercept may mean and what the y-intercept may mean. So first I'll tell them, read the question, look at the graph, and then explain to me what's going on here. I just want to know how well they can interpret a graph. Um, so typically they'll get it a little backwards and they'll say that, hey, if you make less mistakes, you get paid more money. And this is where I emphasize the lesson of, well, y is the result of x. So I have them write this on the reference sheet. Y is the result of X. In other words, X happens and then result of X. X happens and then Y is the result of that. So in other words, they're not getting paid for their number of mistakes. They're actually getting paid up front because that's the X value. And then seeing how that upfront payment affects how well of a job they do on the particular task. So first we emphasize that, but then I'll say, the SAT will ask you to interpret the intercepts of a graph, and you need to know how to do that. So first I'll ask them, if this graph had continued, if it had continued, and we had an x-intercept like right there, how would we interpret that? And on rare occasion, kids get it right, but for the most part, I have to explain it. Um, I'll say, okay, so here the y value is zero, and y is the number of mistakes. But remember, y is the result of x, so first, it would be the x-intercept would be the amount of prize money I'd have to award up front before people took it really seriously and no longer made any mistakes. That'd be the best way to interpret the x-intercept here. And then after I do that, I'll have them say, well, okay, well now on your own, interpret the y-intercept. And that I'll give them a lot more time to try and figure out on their own because I, I really want them to do so. Um, and of course, the right answer to that is if... I award you no prize money or offer to pay you no money at all for work, so I joke slavery, um, then you'd be expected to make, you know, that many mistakes, right? So that's the best way to interpret the y-intercept. And, and then I'll ask them which answer that is, and it ends up being D, the expected number of mistakes a person would make when no cash prize is offered. So, and then lastly, I'll emphasize, okay, well, then let's say I asked you to find the x and y intercept algebraically if you actually had an equation. So they ask about this a lot in the SAT, definitely important. Um, so they need, need to know to find the x intercept, set y equal to zero, and then solve for x. And if you need to find the y intercept, set x equal to zero, and solve for y.